Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Huey Han. I'm a product manager uh, from Amazon S3, and I'm here to talk to you about Amazon S3 access grants. So to take a step back, um, when we talk to uh, S3 customers, especially data lake customers, about what they want to govern their S3 data a little bit better, especially across a complex organization, they typically cite a couple of things. First is that customer want to grant permissions directly to identities in an external corporate directory. So increasingly for this kind of data lake and analytics workloads, where it's not just application accessing your data, it's data scientist, it's data engineer, whose identities are usually sort of corporate identities. So for example, Active Directory user and Active Directory groups, Octa user, Octa groups, and customer want to grant S3 permission directly to those identities. Second is enforce granular S3 access at scale. What that means is that um, for a lot of data lakes and analytic patterns, typically what you would have is a single bucket that have many, many data sets, and you share that uh, with different users, different groups, different applications. And you want to say like, hey, this user, this group, uh, or this application can only access a subset of the, all the data I have in my bucket. I don't want to grant overly permissive permissions to like everything to everyone. And the third thing is that customer want to have end-to-end -end auditing. And this is especially important for a uh, customer from a uh, highly regulated industry like government, healthcare, and financial services, where you want to audit and user access. And uh, the typical pattern today is that customer would, you know, map their external directory groups to an IAM role and grant those IAM role access to uh, S3 resources. Now, under that paradigm, if let's say Jane and David are from the same group, are sharing the same role, and then and, and then that role uh, access S3 data, you can only use CloudTrail to see the role access data. You can't really see whether it's Jane or whether it's David that's assuming the role to access data. Uh, as a result, customer have to build sort of custom end-to-end -end auditing uh, solutions. So this is where sort of S3 Access Grant come into pictures with all those sort of what customer want in mind. What S3 Access Grant allows you to do is that it allows you to grant S3 Access directly to a directory user and groups like Azure AD user and groups, Okta user and groups, in addition to IAM principles. What this means is that you can define uh, S3 Access in a very intuitive grant style and in a very highly scalable way, kind of like what we're showing here on the left where for the first whole example, you are granting different access level to different S3 folders or prefixes to an AD group. And last week's example, you're granting different access level to different folders to an IAM role. And the first whole example is very typical for a, a human access pattern in analytics. And you can imagine, you know, uh, you create a rep projects that, and then assign a lot of data scientists to that rep projects uh, where they're tasked to train the next generation of machine learning model for you. And using these kind of grants, you basically can simplify your access management that grant these data scientists in this AD group uh, access to their S3 data directly so that they can use a notebook environment, for example, to pull those data from S3 and train the model. Last example is very typical uh, for a application pattern. And specifically in the analytic and data lake world, you can imagine this is a Spark job running, you know, either using Amazon EMR or open source Spark that uh, you are uh, managing yourself that has a read permission on a staging folder and then write permission on the clean folder. With that in mind, sort of how you define permissions, what Access Grants does is that it vends just in time least privileged temporary credential based on these grants when the users or the applications or the clients need access to data. And that further enhances your security posture. And last but not least, S3 Access Grant has integration with CloudTrail so that you have detailed end user access history via AWS CloudTrail. You can see you know, whether it's Jane is accessing the data or whether it's David accessing the data, even though they're from the same uh, AD group. Now let's walk through a quick um, use case uh, and to see S3 Access Grant in action. And what we're showing here on the slide is a very high level and typical use case of S3, especially for analytic data lakes, where you have a bucket that's sort of your centralized data lakes that store a lot of a variety of different uh, objects and data. Uh, some of it might be PDF, uh, some of it might be JSON, like broad logs. It could be, you know, text file for training machine learning model. It could be JPEG and PNG to train computer vision model. And so that's on one side, you have your data lakes where you have the data 
assets you want to control access to. And then you're serving different type of user persona. On one hand, you have your technical users, which are the data scientists, the data engineer who can write code. On the other hand, you have business users who want to just more intuitive interface and be able to pull the data from S3. How can you use S3 access grants to control access to that? You have your bucket and you have your user. To use S3 Access Grant, the first thing you would do is that you create a Access Grant instance. Now, this instance is a, just a logical grouping of all the grants and permission that you will store. Once you create an instance, you start registering grant, specifying who can have what level access to what. And this is where you know you, you specify whether it's AD group, whether it's users, whether it's Octa users, uh, whether it's IAM principles. You specify who can have what level access, whether it's read, write, rewrite into what S3 data. Once you configure the grants, now when user um, and application access S3, they can now leverage S3 access grants. At time of access, users and applications and client will first talk to the access grant instance in a to request access to the S3 data via the get data access API. If the request is authorized, access grant will then you back temporary credentials then the user and applications can then use that temporary credential vended by access grants to access S3. One thing we do want to mention is that S3 access grant is part of a bigger AWS story. And specifically, we talk a lot about the directory identity uh, aspect of S3 access grant, where you can define native S3 permission using a directory identity directly. The reason why that capability works is because of AWS IAM identity centers, trusted identity propagation feature. And specifically, what trusted identity propagations in AWS IAM Identity Center allows you to do is that it is a, a single point of entry for your workforce identity to onboard to the AWS ecosystem. Once you onboard your external identity provider, whether it's Azure AD, Octa, Ping, One Login, once you onboard your external identity provider to Identity Center, thereafter, within the AWS ecosystem, you can define you know, whether it's S3 permissions, whether it's Redshift permission, whether it's Lake formation permission for Athena, you can define all of those services permissions against those directory identities directly. Now, that is a very powerful thing to simplify your identity and access management. Hopefully, that gave you a quick overview of what S3 Access Grant does. And if you want more information, you can hop over to the documentation for details or the many blocks we have. And I hope uh, S3 Access Grant can help you govern your S3 data better.